Now that the Destiny 2 beta is finally over, let's go ahead and talk about it. The good, the bad, and whether or not you should buy it. Let's get started. Let's start with the good. Destiny 2 is built from the ground up to be one of the best PvE experiences out there. Spanning multiple planets in various locales, you can group up with two other players to explore sprawling vistas filled with bad guys to shoot and gear to loot. Even in the limited scope of the beta that we played, the world honestly had this buzz of feeling alive that most games just don't have. To use Borderlands 2 as an example, that game feels kind of like a slog through hordes and hordes of stupid bots with lots of jokes and humor mixed into the fold. This game though, it's a bit heavier on having better shooting mechanics and FPS mechanics in general, keeping a more serious tone and works hard to bring life to the world and succeeds. The short single player mission available in the beta was just that, short, but it did a good enough job at explaining to me what was going on in the world as somebody that's never played Destiny before. About all that I knew about that game was that there was a giant orb called the Traveler, and that gave player characters light, which fuels their superhuman abilities. That's about all that I knew. Past that, clueless. And I felt that I was well enough introduced to the characters that I've at least got my footing in what's going on in the world. In this beta, I can't evaluate how the leveling and progression system worked since you started off at the max level of 20. However, what I can do is evaluate the loot systems as they were presented in the beta. So, at the end of the longer PvE mission with that boss at the very end, which is called a strike mission, you get two loot drops at the end. In PvP matches, which is a player versus player match, you get one drop at the end. Enemies will also sometimes drop items in the world that you can pick up, which adds to your list of treasures. Now, this was not in the beta, but this will be in the full game. This is a looter shooter after all, and you have to expect a little bit of grinding and praying to RNG Jesus to eventually get the items that you want for your character. With a small pool of items available in this beta, it's hard to judge what the chances are going to be to actually unlock what you really want in the full game because I don't have actual numbers that you can run, I don't know percentage chances of getting certain things, but what we can say is that it's definitely going to take you a few weeks of playing hard on one specific class to get close to having all the gear that you really want. Getting gear that's good enough to be high level content viable, like raid viable, isn't the worst grind in the world, but Getting what you really want, like that perfect set, is going to be a lot more difficult. You can get that generalized, good enough gear just fine, but that singular set is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. My first minor complaint about this game would be that it suffers from the statistics hiding syndrome that a lot of modern games also suffer from, and they have for years. For example, when customizing pieces of armor on your character, you're offered choices between better damage resistance, or better health regeneration, or sometimes better mobility. I have absolutely no idea what 30% progress on that little progress bar in either direction actually means. It's just a red or green little colored bar next to the gray bar that shows what my gun or armor or whatever will actually do. But it has no bearing, it has no basis. I don't know what it means, there's no explanation of it. So like... What is mobility? Is it my player's walking speed? Is it my sprint speed? Is it both? Does it influence the time to aim down sights or raise my gun when leaving the sprint animation? What does it actually do? There's no clarification or explanation there, and I feel like the game would benefit a lot from it. I feel like I would benefit a lot from also knowing the damage resistance numbers. So, does the piece of armor that I have on give 10% damage resistance normally, but if I choose the modification that further increases my damage resistance, then it goes to 25%? Is that a thing? Because that does change the math of how quickly I'm going to die to certain guns, and when low rate of fire, high damage weapons like the Better Devils rule the metagame like they did in the beta on PC, it makes a big difference. That is a big time to kill difference if you set your gear to go for full damage resistance versus full health regen, or some combination of the two. So it'd be really cool if we actually had real numbers on these things. Now, it may actually exist, and if it does, I simply couldn't find it. So I will put that asterisk there, because it might really be there, and I've missed it. And that's totally possible, because I am not a previous Destiny player. So I don't know exactly how these little minutiae work, but I do wish that as a new player to Destiny, that that was a little bit more obvious and apparent to me. Now, I understand that 
there is a want to not overload players with numbers and statistics because it's, well, it's overwhelming. And that is a good call. They're making the right choice. But I would really like to see a toggle or something where I could, if I want to see that info, I can turn it on, but maybe by default it's simply turned off. And again, it's possible that I've missed that if it does exist. So if it does, please correct me in the comments so I know. But I, I do think that that info was not available. At least I didn't see it. So I'd love to see that for final release just for number crunchers and stats nerds like me to actually make better predictions on what gear would be best for me uh, just from a theory crafting perspective because that's very, very fun for me. To expand on this statistics point a little bit more, I would really like something like a codex in-game where all the weird jargon of Destiny is explained just a little bit more. Weapons have this big number that's almost always 200 or 205 and has a picture of fire next to it or some other random icon and as a new player to Destiny, I have no idea what that means. Now, I asked my friends and they helped me to understand what it does, but if I didn't have somebody else to ask, that would have been completely meaningless to me without some sort of an explanation. Simultaneously, we've got this impact statistic, which I never would have guessed was this weapon's damage in PvP. But again, once it and the rest of Destiny's unique jargon was explained to me, I was able to understand everything quite clearly. So. My feedback here might be to offer a little bit more onboarding for new players, which frankly probably will exist in the full game anyways. Still, if it's not there, I'd love to see something like that implemented in the near future after the release of the game, because I'm sure there's going to be lots of people like me who are brand new to Destiny, especially in the PC player space, so something that'll help to explain those assumed fundamentals to us would probably be very welcome. Switching gears a little bit, I did quite enjoy the strike mission with the boss fight at the end that was in this beta well enough. It allowed me to see a few more factions in the game than what was available in the campaign mission, and honestly it's been quite a while since I've fought a proper boss in an MMO style game with a couple of friends. It scratched an itch that I didn't even know that I had, so I'm cautiously optimistic to see what the rest of the game has in store. I really hope this game can deliver on boss mechanics that are a bit more difficult than bullet sponging and invincibility phases where you fight random waves of trash mobs in between your small opportunity to deal real damage to the boss, stuff like that. I'm tired of that. I fought hundreds and hundreds of bosses like that in my decades of video game play, and I think that Bungie is one of those few developers that can really challenge that paradigm, so here's hoping. Next, let's move into PvP. I'll be upfront. I didn't have a whole lot of fun with the PvP in this game. However, for the most part, I think it's because this isn't really my style of game more than anything else. For example, your weapons do less damage at long range if you don't aim down sights. Logically, this makes no sense whatsoever, and to me, it feels very punishing. It forces me to play the game in a way I don't want to play it, and I don't feel that I should have to play it. And I don't know that there's a good enough reason to justify this mechanic's existence in the game as a whole. If you're able to consistently hit people at long range while hip firing as opposed to being aimed down your sights and thus zooming in, don't you deserve the reward of doing the exact same damage to someone for hitting that smaller target? Don't you deserve the reward for activating a smaller amount of aim assist by not aiming down sights if you play on a controller? I think that that's reasonable, but maybe there's some kind of reason I don't know about. Again, in my opinion, I think that it should be the same, but honestly, I'm not a Destiny player. I've never been a Destiny player, so maybe there's some reasons why it is the way that it is and why it works the way that it does, but the only other thing that seems really fundamentally bad to me, more so than just not being to my personal taste, would have to be the hitboxes in this game. Other people have called this fat bullets, or just big hitboxes, or bullet magnetism, which I don't even think is correct. And really, I'm not going to linger on the nomenclature too much. If you slow down footage of guns like the Better Devil's Pistol in particular, you're going to notice that very often, a complete miss will register a hit on an enemy target. This was shown extremely well by popular YouTuber Levelcap, and I suggest you watch his video on the subject for further examples of this mechanic in action. When you combine this with the very high levels of controller aim assist in this game, it feels like it's almost impossible to miss opponents once you become comfortable enough with the game as a whole. GameSager recently said to me on his stream that he played a full match and counted all of his hits versus misses, and he came out to only 6 misses in a full game from start to finish. Statistically speaking, that's well over a 90% accuracy, which seems way too high for any PvP first-person shooter. 
you're often going to be fluctuating between 40 and 60% in your average shooter. 90% accuracy is, in my opinion, much too high. Only time is going to tell if this is a metagame issue, where people need to get better at left-right strafing, crouch spamming, using the radar against their foes to mind game them, blah blah blah, but these things have me frightened on a fundamental level. For comparison, my average accuracy with Soldier 76 in uh, Overwatch is like 38 or 39 percent. And I feel like I'm a pretty average Soldier 76. I'm not a great soldier, I'm not a great Overwatch player, but my accuracy in that game is, I feel, quite average, and that's at about 40 percent on a good day. So 90 percent in Destiny with the aim assist, with the big hitboxes, just seems way too crazy to me in a game that has roughly similar if not maybe even a little faster time to kill in a lot of cases. With those couple of things out of the way, there's a lot of stuff that I think is actually very good about PvP in its current state, and there's a couple of things that I personally disagree with that I don't think are wrong decisions. I don't think that the developers made a bad game. It's just stuff that I personally don't enjoy in my shooters. So first up, melee has a very long range, it lunges quite far, deals pretty good damage, but to counteract that, it's got a very long cooldown period. So if you melee somebody and it doesn't kill them, you're screwed. That's a death sentence for you for making a bad melee. And I think that's a good way to punish the craziness of a melee attack in the game, because sometimes you get kills you don't deserve, but if you get too greedy with those kills that you don't really deserve, you're going to get screwed over, and that's really, really cool to me. The grenades in this game are absurdly powerful, but again, they're balanced by a really long cooldown and only one class at this point seems to have access to a tool allowing them to carry extra and generate more faster. The inclusion of power ammo on the map in addition to this on, well, also on a long timer, with the ability to customize your power weapon of choice is actually really great. I enjoy the gameplay that it brings about. I can choose the power weapon that I want, and all I have to do is control an area of the map on a specific timer, and I can get ammo for it to continue dominating the game. That's really, really nice to me. It reminds me of the good old days of Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3. You know, you're getting on Valhalla, you hit that man cannon out to the middle, and you're fighting over that Spartan laser in the middle. Those were the good days, and I remember playing that and having a lot of fun with that, so it's nice to see a similar mechanic being a thing in Destiny. The ultimates are, well, very ultimate. In my opinion, too much so, but it definitely does feel good to be on the attacking end with one of them, just shoulder checking people over and over and over with Titan or golden gunning an entire team all at once. But on the flip side, uh, being on the receiving end of a Titan slam or just around a random corner out of nowhere feels pretty bad. But then again, Killing that charging titan by shooting him in the head with your energy weapon or whatever and just destroying him feels pretty good. So it's polarizing and sometimes it feels good, sometimes it feels bad, but I think that's kind of the intention and I think that Bungie is kind of hitting their mark there pretty well. Uh, it's not to my taste, but I think that to a lot of people it will be to their taste and I think that if you're into that style of gameplay then Destiny's, well, choice of how the ultimates work is going to be very, very fun for you. As a closing statement on the subject, I will say this. I honestly did not like the PvP, but I don't think it's because the PvP is bad or the game is bad. I think that I'm just not part of the target audience that this game is catering to, and I think a lot of people will have a lot of fun with it, and I think that it's well made. It's just not for me. I did have my moments, but in the end, the sluggishness and limited mobility really hampered my ability to have fun in a lot of cases. The lack of damage when not aiming down sights also bothered me enough that I don't really want to retrain the way that I play FPSs just to pick up this game. So when I do pick this one up, I don't see myself doing the PvP because of these things, and I'll be sticking mostly to the PvE experience with my subscribers and with my personal friends. I wanted to stop and turn away from PvP after just like maybe two hours, but I kept playing for hours and hours more because I don't think it's fair to judge a game based on just two hours of gameplay. I got somewhere between six and eight good hours of PvP in, and I learned a lot more about the game and how to properly play it from that extra time. Once I learned to stop fighting the mechanics and instead make them work for me, my enjoyment of the experience definitely did improve. At this point, I'm lukewarm on it enough to at least try it in full release once I get some decent gear. 
Who knows? I might actually play it if Inferno makes a return and we can get rid of that silly Halo-style radar. If we can have no radar and force people to have actual situational awareness, I think the game will play much, much better. And that's okay. I don't have to like every single part of the game to recommend it to others to play and enjoy. Destiny 2 is shaping up to be a monster of a game in all the right ways, and I look forward to joining the ranks of the other Guardians out there in a much more casual way than I'm normally used to. If you're on the fence about this one, I think it's absolutely worth your time and money. Just be open and try not to hate on the game too much if you don't initially like it. It's got a lot to offer, it's got a very wide gamut of things you could possibly do and have fun with, so try to capitalize on the bits that you do like, and your happiness should improve quite a lot. And with that, we have Destiny 2. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope that you've learned something new. If you guys like this style of video, make sure you go over and follow me on Twitter and Twitch, where I do a lot more of my content these days, because YouTube is just not really being that lucrative anymore, thanks to Adpocalypse. If you want to support me and everything that I do, Patreon is a great way to do that, and there's a link down in the description box down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, hate mail, love mail, whatever, Leave it in the comment section down below. I will do my best to read through all of it as soon as I possibly can. And with that, I think we're all set to go here. So thanks again, guys. I will see you in the next one. Take care.